Daisy here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how I made this mermaid art journal layout. And there's one I made the other night when I was at a craft party with some of my friends. And that was a lot, that was a lot of fun to make too, but I didn't take any video. So when I was working on this, I did take video. Um, so you get to see what a hot mess this turns into as I'm working. So when I first started, I thought I was going to have this very fashionable lady uh, who's going to have a floaty dress that floated onto the other page. Um, but the sketch just wasn't happening. I thought I'd sketch with a uh, black marker and then um, I would be able to layer stuff over it and it would just look so fabulous, but that's not how it always goes. Um, so even though you're seeing this sketch here at the beginning, actually it doesn't look that bad now that I look back at it, but it just was not working for me. So, you know, I tried lengthening out the legs and messing with it a little bit, but uh, in the end I didn't like it. Now I kind of wish I, st I stuck with it though, because I kind of like it. Um, but anyway, I at that point I said, nah, I'm not going to use this. I'm doing something else. So I grabbed some gesso that I had put in this dauber top bottle. Uh, it's one of the the new um, Jane Davenport products. It will be out in stores next month, I think. Um, I'm not sure I'm recommending this for gesso. They, she doesn't recommend it for gesso, but I thought it would be a really handy thing. But I think it's going to shred the tip of that dauber bottle, unfortunately. Um, but I'll let you know as I use it more and more how it works out. So I keep a little plastic palette here for my mermaid markers or for any other um, like juicy paint pen so I can start it there and uh, not waste any media. So this is thinking I'm still going to rescue this this girl at this point and uh, I'm just adding the, I'm using a, a separate brush to mix in the mermaid marker color in with the gesso to kind of make some poor man's acrylic paint I guess. Um, just thinking that well, maybe I can I can salvage this and uh, I quickly realized that it wasn't going to happen so I just started to go ahead and uh, cover it with color. So there's a quick tip for you. If you don't have acrylic paint, you're maybe out cropping or something and uh, you don't have all your stuff with you, just use some gesso and tint it with your markers and it works great. Just don't use your marker directly over the gesso or it can mess up the tip. So that's why I use that little palette. But I also found that palette's really handy for anytime I'm starting off a uh, new marker. Oh, I'm using the back end of that um, new brush from Jane Davenport to scrape some of the ink around. Um, so yeah, so I like to have a palette out because then I can squeeze out the colors to get the marker started, but it can dry in that palette and I can re-wet it if I want to and I don't waste any awesome media and I can also mix my colors so I have a greater variety. And I picked that palette up for two bucks at Ocean State Job Law, which is a discount place uh, here in Maine. So uh, I took the other Dauber Top bottle and I decided to try matte medium in there because I thought, boy, won't that be handy? I think I'm gonna have to thin it down though because that's having a harder time than the gesso to come through. Um, but you know, um, I really love to experiment. I like to try to make products that will make or try to take products and make my own thing with thing you know kind of go off brand with them to try to make my crafting life easier so that's what I was intending with the uh, with the Dauber bottles but I'm not sure if they can really handle the thick stuff I think they're meant for ink honestly but um, but hey it's fun to try um, and I'm sticking down this napkin I took the back part off the napkin and my little trick for doing that was I just stuck a little piece of washi tape on the back of the napkin and, and was able to separate the layers a little easier that way um, so I don't know if it makes a big deal if you don't take the back off but you wouldn't see so many layers underneath so that's why I did it. Now I have a piece of cardboard there I stuck behind that journal page. Now honestly, I'm not sure it's a great idea that I worked right on the back of that freshly painted journal page because um, I think that if anything slooped under there, it would have gotten it kind of, you know, reconstituted my paint on that page and made it not so great. But well, I'm a risk taker, what can I say? I did put a little gesso over the napkin just to tone down some of the pattern and I'm going in with some of the uh, leftover mer mermaid marker ink on my palette. See how handy that is? And I'm um, just kind of making both of the pages unified. Um, and we can barely, we can't even see that original sketch that we had. Now here I'm making jellyfish and to do that I'm taking the flat brush and just putting ink on one side and kind of wiggling it in a circle. And I thought that the jellyfish fish motif would be really great for an undersea type of art journal page. Um, and I actually ended up really happy with how the jellyfish came out. So I'm taking this little bit of a sketch that was from the napkin. You can kind of see part of somebody's like um, kind of hairline there. And I thought I would just try to go ahead and turn it into um, like the front half of a mermaid. So I'm kind of painting negatively uh, around the mermaid face and bust. And um, 
just trying to carve out some design there. I am very slow at this. I mean, I don't know how fast anybody else is, but this took me an hour in real time. And it was a very interesting to watch, you know, because I was I had to stop and think about it. It's not like when I watercolor and I intuitively know what these medias are going to do. I'm kind of like learning and figuring and thinking as I go. So uh, so it took some time. So I don't want you to, um, you know, be copying this page and think, oh, shoot, it's taking me forever. You know, I'm obviously speeding it up about four times as fast as it um, as it really was. Now, after that dried, I went in with some colored pencils. I don't think it matters what brand you have. These are some color soft uh, pencils that I have. And honestly, I grabbed this set because it's only a set of uh, like a set of 24 and a set of 12. So it fits right on my table really easily right in the tin. So uh, so that's why I grabbed that one. And I'm just kind of putting down some uh, kind of like a, a peachy rose color. And I'm just doing some neutral tones to cr try to figure out how I want the face to go, give it a little detail. And um, you just kind of refine it a bit because it's definitely at the hot mess stage. Now, I made a mistake and the cool thing I discovered with colored pencils over gesso is that you can erase them. So that was a happy little accident because I had really messed up her face. The profile, she looked very scary. So, uh, and I guess mermaids could look scary. I mean, the mermaids from Harry Potter are pretty scary. I'm trying to make her look elegant, but I was also thinking that she's a mermaid, so she'd have like a super um, strong shoulders and neck area. But I think I might have went a little too far with that. We'll see at the end. You can let me know what you think um, in, the, in the comments below. And I'm also using the colored pencils because I know I can get some really nice linear lines for the hair. And I know they won't wash away when I put on more water media. So, uh, so that's kind of a nice trick. If you sketch with colored pencils, the colored pencils will resist um, subsequent layers of watercolor or marker because of their waxy content. And by marker, I, I mean the mermaid marker pens. I think if you were going over some of these with like a regular marker, it might clog the nib. So just be aware that when you're going over with a marker type media that you're not going over something that the marker will dissolve and it will clog up the nib. And now I'm just kind of refining the face a little bit. I did go in and put, uh, you know, some marker, mermaid marker in there. You could actually use um, a liquid watercolor or an ink in place of the mermaid markers if you don't have them, but you like that transparent, bold look. Uh, I thought I would give her a little uh, brassiere, a seaweed brassiere there, or bathing suit top, I guess. Um, I wasn't going to at first, but then I thought I might bother, uh, it might bother somebody, especially if they're, you know, letting their kids watch my tutorials. I didn't want anybody to get a, I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. Um, and also, I didn't really have uh, very proportionate anatomy. It wasn't very accurate. So um, I you know, I try to disguise and hide if I know I've got something that's not quite accurate. Uh, so yeah, I'm out of practice. I need definitely need to uh, to go to some more life drawing classes. And uh, I'm just kind of, you know, smearing media around, layering colored pencils. Um, it's funny because I'll see these little glimpses of what I want the art journal page to look like, and then it goes horribly wrong. And then I've got to backtrack and bring things back from, you know, <laughs> the point of no return, I guess. Uh, so I've zoomed in a little bit, and I'm just using my black micron to go in and add some detail. Now, you do have to be careful going in with the microns because it could be very, um, uh, very fickle and it can pick up other media and be messed up. Now this is one of the new uh, rub-ons, the, the t tattoos, journal tattoos I think they're called, um, and they transfer very easily which I was really pleased with. There was a mermaid on the napkin as well uh, that was kind of medium sized and I thought if I put that little small mermaid in there it's going to give me uh, a nice scale. And what I'm doing here is using pan pastels, which kind of feel like eyeshadow. They're very soft, uh, chalky pastels. And I'm trying to give the skin tone a little bit more body. I'm trying to give the the mermaid a little bit more substance here. Uh, so, I mean, I was pretty much just like, as I was going thinking, okay, what can I do to save this? And just kind of grabbing something else and throwing it on top. I don't know if that's how you operate, but that seems to be how my art journal pages go. <laughs> that's why a real-time tutorial would be very tedious to watch, I think. Uh, and I'm also throwing in some of the pan pastel in the hair. Um, my pan pastels, I actually um, have the full collection and um, I have them all arranged by their um, by their tints, shades, extra dark shades, or the or the painting set, which are the the pure colors. So I used a combination of the pastels or tints rather, and the painting shades. And I found that getting those four sets uh, made it so I didn't get any duplicates. So um, otherwise, you will get duplicates in some of their different sets, like portrait or landscape um, or mixed media. They have uh, they definitely have duplications in there. And, you know, I'm just swapping between colored pencils and pastels and markers and um, kind of going back and forth until I feel like I've got, 
you know, something that I'm happy with. One challenge I face when I'm creating art journal pages, and I'm sure other people do, is that I everything gets really dark or everything gets really samey and I can't pull a focal area out. And um, so when that happens, I'll often try to go and look for an opposite. So if I have something green, for instance, I'll try to pull something pink or red in there next to it to kind of make it pop. Or if I've got something, if everything seems like it's mid-tone, I'll go in with a really dark uh, media to help kind of break it, break something out, break my focal point out. And now here I'm feeling that the mermaid is very sparse, there's not much going on, so I um, I drew on some like just grasses and seaweed on the bottom with the colored pencils um, and I'm also trimming off the excess napkin off the page because that's kind of bothering me. I want to see it looking a little bit more finished at this point and I stuck another piece of cardboard under that page so I didn't get the uh, the pages underneath all all messy. I decided a frame would be nice, so I'm using the Pan Pastels, and this is a little Pan Pastel applicator. Actually, I really need to change all the tips on my Pan Pastel um, painting knives because they're all getting all dried out and nasty, but uh, but I was just, you know, I was just using what was ready and what I could reach and just kind of going with it. Um, but anyway, I'm making a little frame in purple here. Uh, I just pulled one of the colors that was from the napkin in the background and one of those first uh, mermaid marker colors I put down. I just thought it kind of gave it a nice finished look. And now I'm trying to do some more shadowing, um, kind of the back of the neck where the hair would be leaving a shadow um, under the bosom and on the belly and just, you know, trying to give the skin tone at least a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, you know, fullness. And I'm using a uh, metallic gold mermaid marker to try to make the seaweed kind of come forward a little bit and be a little bit brighter. And now I'm using a metallic green one to pretty much do the same thing, just kind of dabbing in some different textures because I don't want all the seaweed to be grasses. I want some different textures in there too. It's really important when you get to like a hot mess stage or you get to a point where it doesn't feel like your paper will accept anything else or you feel like you absolutely have no control in anything Thing, that's a great time to dry it or take a break and I used a heat tool to dry this in between layers I really thought that everything was real stiff so to combat that I made some tendrils with colored pencils and the mermaid markers again and I feel like that really gave a lot more life and freedom uh, to the page so um, another little tip for you there so I noticed that the napkin was kind of peeling up on the edges I didn't stick it down very well so I just took the top off my dauber bottle and stuck my brush in there and uh, just kind of tamp down those lifted up edges and I'm hitting everything with some Aquanet hairspray just to uh, help it um, dry uh, help it seal everything and help it dry and now I just dripped a little pink ink on the um, jellyfish and then I immediately regretted it but um, I decided to just go with it because it's there right and I just made some squiggly lines with my brush to kind of make it look a little bit more like the tendrils on a jellyfish and then I actually really liked it I was happy with the way um, it ended up on the final page so then I thought well I got this color in my brush maybe I'll bring some over to the other page and then I immediately regretted that and um, I probably still wish I hadn't done that but um, in the end I think it was I think it was okay but I just I did if I had to do it again I I would not have pulled the pink back over to the other side but hey an art journal is like a playground for your art supplies it's, it's a great place to kind of get your feet wet and have some fun creative play and yeah i don't regret it i don't regret it wouldn't do it again but i don't regret it a lot of things in life like that huh and so now i'm using the paint over pens which are like an acrylic paint pen almost like a chalk pen really and i am just adding details to the hair adding some details to the seaweed and adding some tendrils uh to kind of tone down that hot pink um, I think it was starfish. I can't remember the name of that. But anyway, I used it to, it might be called jellyfish even. I'm not sure. Uh, I just used it to put some tendrils in there and I used the, that's starfish there, that, uh, paint over pen. And I just defined the edges of the jellyfish. And then with a white gel pen, this is, um, the Uniball Signo. I put some really super white highlights. Now with a gel pen, it will pick up, if you have mermaid marker underneath, it's going to pick it up and you're not going to have bright white. It's going to be tinted. But if you let it completely dry and you go over again, sometimes you can bring the bright white out. Um, but that's pretty much all I did to this page. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, it took me an hour. So be gentle to yourself. Be kind to yourself. If you are making some marginal pages, it rarely ever goes in a linear fashion. You loop around and you make mistakes and you make hot messes and you, you know, rescue it from beyond the grave. And that's kind of the beauty of it, I think. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Until next time, happy crafting.